Hello and welcome to EGM 702, Week 3, Part 4, Spectral Indices. In the previous lesson, we talked about doing band arithmetic with different satellite image bands, uh, and we talked some about the drawbacks of those different uh, band arithmetics. So, for example, it, we discussed how it's difficult, difficult to compare band differences. So if we have our band 1 and band 2 here, if we take the difference between band 2 and band 1, um, it's difficult to compare those differences between different seasons or even different locations within an image. This is because of environmental factors such as the slope and aspect or potential shadow, um, either cloud shadows or just topographic shadows, uh, but also differences in seasonal illumination. Looking at band ratios, this helps to limit the seasonal and environmental factors, but it is effectively unbounded. We have values ranging from zero to potentially infinity on the other side. In addition, values between zero and one are compressed. That is, that it is that makes it harder for us to visualize the differences uh, for areas where band one is greater than band two. So to help fix this, we can combine the best of both of these different techniques in something called a normalized difference index, where we take band two minus band one, and we divide by the sum of band two and band one. This helps us to limit seasonal and environmental factors, which we get from the band ratio, but it also gives us bounded values. We can't have values greater than minus, or we can't have values less than minus one or greater than one. And it also is centered on zero. So we, we can easily distinguish between positive and negative differences between the two images. Perhaps the most well used example of a normalized difference index is the normalized difference vegetation index or NDVI. And this is calculated as the difference between the near-infrared reflectance and the red reflectance divided by the sum of the near-infrared and red reflectances. An NDVI value greater than zero typically means we're looking at healthy vegetation, although this is not always the case. An NDVI value of less than zero usually means that we're looking at something else, for example, clouds, snow and ice, or soils. We can use the NDVI for lots of different purposes. For example, we can use it to map healthy vegetation. And because the NDVI value is often related to the vegetation present within a pixel, for example, it's fairly well correlated with the amount of leaf area present within the pixel, we can use this to derive further information about the vegetation that we're trying to study. Another uh, example of a normalized difference index is the normalized difference water index. And there are two different indeed there are two different normalized difference indices for water. Uh, I'm going to talk about the one for liquid water and then I'll mention the, the other one at the end of the slide. So for water, the reflectance in the green or visible green light is usually much greater than the reflectance in the near infrared. So to derive the NDWI for liquid water, we would take the green reflectance or the green band minus the near infrared band divided by the sum of the two. And you can see what this looks like for our image here. And sure enough, uh, high values of the NDWI indicate water bodies, either the ocean or the different lakes and lochs that we see within Ireland. Uh, we can use this, as you might have guessed, for mapping water bodies. We can also use this for flood detection. And as I mentioned, there is a second NDWI that came that was published at the same time uh, using the near infrared reflectance and the shortwave infrared reflectance. And this actually tells us something about the leaf water content for vegetation. Um, so it can be a little bit confusing um, because these are two different indices that have the same name looking at different things. Another example 
of a normalized difference index is something called the normalized burn ratio, and this is used for studying wildfires and their effects. Uh, so we use this to estimate burn severity. And we take this as the difference between the near infrared and the shortwave infrared reflectance. And the reason for this, as you can see in this diagram from the US Forest Service, is that for burned areas, we have relatively low reflectance in the near infrared portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. And we have relatively high reflectance in the shortwave infrared. And for most healthy vegetation, we have the opposite, where we have high values in the near infrared, low values in the shortwave infrared. We would normally also want to take the difference between, between, we want to take the difference from before the fire and after the fire. So the difference in the ND, NBR or delta NBR. Um, you can see what one of these looks, or you can see what the normalized burn ratio looks like for a Landsat image here. Uh, we have these brown um, fire scars that you can see uh, in the hills near Sacramento, California. Uh, and the normalized burn ratio for this, uh, for this set of images shows the very large uh, red areas or dark red areas that are representing the fire scars. Um, in order to really interpret this, we usually need to do some field assessment. Um, but in general, values of minus one or close to minus one, uh, as are shown here, represent fairly severe forest fires. One other application that we'll discuss in this lesson is something called the Normalized Difference Built Up Index. So for built up spaces, the reflectance in the shortwave infrared is typically greater than the reflectance in the near infrared. And so we calculate the normalized difference built up index as the difference between the shortwave infrared and the near infrared divided by the sum of the shortwave infrared and the near infrared. In order to ensure that vegetation is removed, often we also want to then subtract the NDVI values for those pixels, or at least the NDVI values classified as vegetation or not vegetation. And this was proposed by a paper in 2003 looking at uh, a city in China. And you can see the map of the city here with the built up areas or the impermeable surfaces that are labeled as the gray in the background of this map. And the derived built up, uh, the derived built up map uh, based on this normalized difference built up index shown here, and you can see that it maps fairly well with the example from the map. To summarize, uh, the normalized difference indices combine the advantages of band differencing and ratios, while also losing some of the disadvantages that are present in those two approaches. There are many, many applications that have been derived. I have talked about four of them. There are many, many, many more than this. Um, you can just have a look. Uh, I think one of the textbooks has uh, a whole list or several pages of lists of different normalized difference indices. Um, so we can also combine difference index indices. Uh, for example, the difference, the normalized difference built up index minus the normalized difference vegetation index to further aid in interpretation or classification. Additional resources, uh, you can go look in, uh, you can go read chapter seven of Lilisand, Kiefer, and Chipman. And I've included uh, links to the four different papers that I discussed here. The one by McFeeders is the Normalized Difference Water Index for uh, liquid water. The one by Gao is the one for um, the water content in vegetation. Uh, the paper by Epting et al. looks at different ways of estimating burn severity from satellite images. And then the paper by Ja et al. looks at the normalized difference built up index. That's all I have for this lesson. Um, I hope you found it interesting. And if you have any questions, please post them through the discussion forum on Blackboard. Thanks. Bye.